there are some beautiful auroras happening in the northwest of America right now. Yeah, so like NOAA scientists have given this a really, really simple explanation, and it's it's called a, like a cannibal coronal mass ejection. That's the con that's the thing that's causing all of these auroras going on right now. Cannibal corona mass ejection. Yeah. That sounds a little terrifying. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of funny, right? Because like, just as soon as we get over one kind of corona, we get hit by another. But like this this one, like a cannibal coronal mass ejection, like if I break that down for you, mm -hmm. it's caused by sunspots. So there's a sunspot on the sun called like AR2975 right now. Okay. Um, and what it's been doing over the last, say, like few days is producing up to 17 solar eruptions, two of which um, were uh, have headed straight towards us. Now, one of them was traveling faster than the other. It was the one just like that came just after the first one that was emitted. Now, when those when that f second sun like the like coronal mass ejection caught up with the first, it cannibalized it. It swept it all up into this one big wave of of like these these charged particles, and then they all swept towards the Earth. And then when they hit it, they caused a geomagnetic storm. What, what where they come from in how sunspots are created is magnetic fields are created on the sun. Like the sun is just a giant ball of plasma. So like there's loads of charged particles eddying and moving around on like inside the sun, across the sun's surface. Now, when you have charged particles moving, you're going to induce some magnetism there. But because magnetic field lines can't cross and you've got all these moving particles, like this giant traffic jam of particles moving everywhere, you'll inevitably get these field lines bunched up next to each other. They'll form into these tight knots that can't escape anywhere else. And eventually they will have to snap and release energy. Now they release energy either in the form of a solar flare, like a bright flare of radiation, or they'll release energy in the form of like chucking out some of that plasma from the sun. What's the difference between solar flares and ronal mass ejections? So solar flares is just the bright flash that you'll see of radiation okay. um, from that from that field line snapping that energy release. A coronal mass ejection is some of the sun's like plasma soup actually being like burped out of the sun. I love that phrase plasma soup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, tasty plasma soup. Nice, uh, I mean, pretty, but <laughs> I mean, a little terrifying, right? I mean, yeah. does it affect Earth? Um, so it, it does, but not in like a so not in a in an always really terrible way. Most of the time, the Earth has a pretty strong magnetic field, mm -hmm. which is really really good news for us because it protects us from all of these like highly energized particles that the Sun has just spewed out at us. Um, in this case, at like speeds of like two million miles per hour, which is just I guess. 33 times less than the speed of light pretty quick um so what the earth's magnetic field will do is it will absorb all of these particles the energy will go into stretching out the magnetic field in space so it's like it's kind of bunched out towards the, the it gives it a long tail um and then most of those particles will gather kind of towards the poles where they will like go downwards and then energize some of the molecules in the atmosphere and when these when these um molecules in the atmosphere then give out light um to in order to kind of go down to a lower energy level that's what why we see the aurora now because ah. there's so many of these like particles coming in you're getting auroras much lower down um along the northern hemisphere than you no would normally expect to see that's 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 a pretty that's a nice effect there um mm. and i know that uh, people had already taken video from it. Uh, this is from uh, Manitoba in Canada. Beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I think also you could see the aurora in the US certainly like as far south as Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. Iowa and Oregon over the last two days as well. Oh, right, on uh, spaceweather.com that you guys were sharing information from, uh, they showed some pictures, purple. I mean, mm. purple, what a what an aura that Earth is giving off of this aurora. And, you know, I uh, when you mentioned poles, I'm like, that's why they're always up there towards yeah. the poles. We got to get closer to some poles, Ben. Yeah, yeah. But so, OK, so that's the good. What? Uh, mm. How about damage? <laughs> OK, yes. So damage. Um, so they can cause damage. So 
one of the most recent kind of power outages that was caused by a storm of this type was um, in the was the 1989 Quebec power cut, which was caused mm. by a geomagnetic storm. Now, most of the time, especially when it comes to people who provide like power lines and stuff, a lot of them have shielded like their 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 like power cables and things like that with a kind of Faraday cage, basically, which diverts the energy or they also have like other techniques that allow them to kind of siphon off excess energy that might be given to power lines by storms like this. Okay. But like that hasn't always been the case. Like especially back in 1859, there was a really big event called the, the Great Carrington event, mm. um, which was the largest sort of solar storm in modern human history. I'm sure there have been solar storms uh, just as large throughout our, our, our past. But like before that point, we weren't really documenting it and we didn't have many electronics around, so we didn't really care. Um, but in this case, the Great Carrington event fried most of the telegram systems in the US and in Europe that had been developed at the time. Really? Um, and it also led to auroras that could be seen around like as far south as the, as the Caribbean. Um, and like there were people waking up at night thinking that, that it, like thinking that it was daytime in the Caribbean because of these enormous auroras from this event. I mean, we, we're freaked out about it now when we see things like that. We know more, but I can't even imagine, you know, over a hundred years ago. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In terms of um, more modern sort of phenomena that have caused more modern damage, mm -hmm. other than the Quebec event, um, recently actually uh, there was another geomagnetic storm that caused the downing of um, 40, like 40 of SpaceX's Starlink satellites. Mm -hmm. That was one thing that happened. Um, and on top of that as well, there's a potential risk um, that internet, like the internet in general, especially in the United States, could be cut out by a ge geomagnetic storm because a lot of these cables run underwater through like like latitudes that would be affected by it. And like you would have a geomagnetic storm, they're not shielded. So they would basically be probably quite severely affected by this but as is the case with a lot of things and how, and how they're done with like legislation it's like earthquakes it doesn't often get legislated for until the worst has already happened yeah that's a shame i mean i really like the internet i really i like to keep it around this is how we get to communicate right exactly. Being across yeah, the pond. Exactly. um but but you're saying that we have protections now so most, I think most like power companies have already built in protections into their grids for these kind of things. Okay. It's just, yeah, you're not going to be getting any like, um, I guess, coronal mass ejection memes in the middle of a coronal mass ejection. You have to wait a few weeks for them to fix this, the power, the, the underwater cables. Yeah, and and luckily, Earth, you know, we have this nice electromagnetic shield, right? Already built in, otherwise we'd be, you know, goners. You know, yeah, it, it would fry us and it would also fry our atmosphere. Like a big reason why Mars doesn't have much of an atmosphere, for instance, is it doesn't really have a very active um, magnetic field. So all of those, all of the atmosphere, when, when it gets hit by this these wave of like hydrogen, like particles, like protons, um, like the atmosphere gets stripped away quite quickly. Poor Mars. Poor Mars. Yeah. But that's why we're here, right? We're not, we're not, I mean, we are on Mars, but you know, not yeah. yet. Not yet, not yet. Well, so is there a way to know when things like this will happen? I know we watch the sun, we have video of the sun. It seems more like after the fact. Yeah, so you get a bit of advanced warning. Like, for instance, the Great Carrington event is named after Richard Carrington, who spotted, like, intense solar flares in the sky, like, a few like a few hours, like, maybe about 15 hours before the actual, like, event hit. Mm -hmm. But... The sun is quite a complex object. Like there's loads going on in those magnetic fields. It's still really, really hard for scientists to predict what's going on there. Yeah. If only. If only. Well, until until the next major astronomical event. Thanks so much, Ben. <laughs> Thank you.